We praise Thee, O God, for the Son of Thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Alleluia, Thine the glory, Alleluia, Amen. Alleluia, Thine the glory, revive us again. We praise Thee, O God, for Thy Spirit of light, who has shown us our Savior and scattered our life. Alleluia, thine the glory. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who has borne all our sins and has cleansed every stain. Alleluia, thine the glory. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory. Revive us again. All glory and praise to the God of all grace, who has brought us and sought us and guided our ways. Alleluia, thine the glory. Alleluia, amen. Alleluia, thine the glory. Revive us again, revive us again, fill each heart with thy love, may each soul be rekindled with fire from above, hallelujah, thine the glory, hallelujah, Again. Good morning. Welcome to the services of the church meeting here in North Fort Bend County. I'm so happy to see everyone this morning. Uh, we've got our, our a nice uh, crowd here with our regulars and also some visitors today. And we're so honored that you're here today and glad to see everyone. You're our welcome guest. If you're joining us streaming today, you're always our guest and we invite you to join us every week for our streaming service. So we'll begin in <clears throat> song today. Our brother Gary Eller will do our opening prayer today. Um, our brother Rob Luttrell will preside on our Lord's Supper. Um, brother Vincent will always bring us our service and um, <clears throat> we'll begin in song. Alleluia, praise Jehovah. From the heavens praise his name. Praise Jehovah in the highest, all his angels praise proclaim, all his hosts together praise him, sun and moon and stars on high. Praise him, O ye heaven of heavens, and ye floods above the sky. Let them praises give Jehovah, for his name alone is high. And his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Let them praises give Jehovah, they were made at his command. Them forever he established, 
His decree shall ever stand. From the earth, O oh, praise Jehovah, all ye flood, ye dragons own. Fire and hail and snow and vapors, stormy winds that hear him call. Let them praise his name, Jehovah, for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. All ye fruitful trees and cedars, all ye hills and mountains high, creeping things and beasts and cattle, birds that in the heavens fly, kings of earth and all ye people, Francis greatest judges all. Praise his name, young men and maidens, aged men and children small. Let them praise his gift, Jehovah, for his name alone is high, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted, and his glory is exalted far above the earth and sky. Holy God, Great Father, we come before you to honor and praise your holy name. You're such a good, loving God to us. Um, as we walk through this life, um, we are blessed that your word proves your, your, your love and your beauty and your kindness towards us, Father, as we, as we learn your word and we apply it in our lives. We're thankful, God, for revealing yourself to us, to bringing us into your kingdom, for guiding us in the ways of righteousness, Father. The world around us, as we, as we walk through our lives, the world around us can be so noisy and so busy. And Father, I pray that you put in our hearts to listen to the quiet whispers of your spirit working in our lives, your spirit working through his word to guide us, to calm us, to give us peace, and to, and to transform us into the people that you intend us to be, holy God. I praise you for this, that, you, that you've blessed us with, God, and I, I'm thankful to you. I, I, I pray for this congregation here at the North Fort Bend uh, Church that you... And the work that they are doing in your kingdom, Father, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm blessed by every soul that, that is here that is uh, encouraging me and encouraging one, each, one another to walk in the ways of righteousness. righteousness. And I'm, I'm thankful for them, great God, and I pray you use them to the glory of your holy name, Father. Guide us in praising you and giving you honor. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Sign before our Lord's Supper. Why did my Savior come to earth and to the humble go? Why did Choose a lowly birth because he loved me so. He loved me so. He loved me so. He gave his precious life for. 
me, for me, because he loved me so. Why did he drink the bitter cup of sorrow, pain, and woe? Why on the cross be lifted up? Because he loved me so. for me, for me, because he loved me so. Till Jesus comes, I'll sing his praise, and then to glory go. So he loved me so he loved me so he gave his precious life for me for me because he loved me so. If you haven't picked up your communion supplies, they're back on the back table. In Matthew chapter 20, the Lord speaking said, The Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life as a ransom for many. A ransom. A ransom's a payment. A payment that brings release of a captive. In Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, In Him we have redemption through His blood. Ransom, redeemed, rescued. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 18 and 19, it says, Knowing that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your forefathers, not with perishable things such as silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ. We indeed are ransomed. Ransomed by a great price. The blood of Christ. He commemorated what we're about to partake of. For us to remember Him. And the price He paid to ransom us, to redeem us, to rescue us. Let's pray for the bread. Dear God, we thank you for your Son, our Lord Jesus. We thank you that he was willing to leave your side in heaven, take the form of a man and come to this earth and live as we do. We're mindful of that life. We're mindful of his teachings. We're mindful of his example. And especially we're mindful in remembering his sacrifice, his death, his giving of himself upon a cross, a horrible death to ransom us, to buy us back, to save us. 
We remember that body. And we'd ask that you would bless this bread that commemorates that. And be with us as we partake of it, that we recall and remember all these things of our Lord. It's in His name that we pray. Amen. Dear God, we thank you for this fruit of the vine that represents that blood shed for us, the blood that washes us clean, makes us white in your eyes, that we are washed clean, completely clean of our sins. And we know it's through his death on that cross that we have this this ransom paid for us. Bless this fruit of the vine as we partake of it. Bless us that partake. As we pray in your son's name. Amen. this time we set aside to remember and think about all the ways that God blesses us and he does every day in many many ways that we probably don't even think about or or realize but it's all for the purpose of us to be able to take care of each other and to spread the good news to our fellow man in this community and as broadly as we possibly can in this world. Let's give thanks for those blessings. Dear God and Father, we thank you for the many ways that you bless us. Most especially we're mindful of your son and the blessings of ransom that he paid for us this moment at this time we're also mindful of the ways that you bless us monetarily you bless us with good health you bless us with homes possessions that we can enjoy sustain those that we love and assist those around us but we're mindful all these things come from you and they're with a purpose the purpose that we Share the good news of your Son with those near and far. Help us to do that. Help us to give with a willing heart that these things can be accomplished. It's in your Son, our Savior, the Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I saw him before our lesson today. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. When darkness fails his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is 
sinking sand. When he shall come with trumpet sound, ho, oh, may I then in him be found, pressed in his righteousness alone, for blessed to stand before the throne. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is thinking sand. All other ground is thinking sand. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. We truly serve a good God. Peter said, 1 Peter chapter 3, verse number 12. He said, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open to their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that does evil. God is aware of everything that's going on everything that's going on in the world, everything that's going on in our lives. But he says his ears are open to their prayers. He wants to hear from us. He's waiting to hear from us. He wants to hear our prayers, our praise, our proclamations, how we proclaim his name in this world. Amen. I'm, I'm just thank God for today. I'm grateful today to see everybody visiting with us today. All you are visiting with us uh, by way of Facebook. We hope, trust, and pray that you can come and visit with us here in person today. You know, David said in Psalm, Psalm 27, verse number four, he said, the one thing have I desire of the Lord that will I seek after is that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. David wanted to be in the house of the Lord. I had to get to the point of my life. Where I wanted to come to worship, wanted to be here, wanted to praise God, not be dragged here, not be convinced, not be uh, um, uh threatened to come to the Lord. I remember growing up, my mom, listen, y'all going to get dressed. Y'all come into the house of the Lord. But we get to a point in our life to where we want to be here. We want to come. We want to serve God. We want to praise God. Then he said, inquire in his temple that we want to know more and learn more about him. Peter said in second Peter chapter three, verse 18, he said, but grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We all want to grow in the knowledge. Amen. Amen. So we're just grateful to God to see everybody, everyone here today. Today I'll be coming out of Numbers chapter 14, the verses is 1 through 4. Numbers chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. I'll be reading from the ESV translation. And I know some that they, they read from the King James, some read from uh, NIV. It's okay. We're going to do everything in our God-given ability to make it as plain as possible so that we can get the author's true intent. Numbers chapter 14, the verses is one through four. Say amen if you're there. The Bible reads, then all the congregation raised a loud cry and the people wept that night and all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation said to them, would that we had died in the land of Egypt. Or would that we had died in this wilderness? Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? Our wives, our little ones will become a prey. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? And they said to one another, let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. I titled this message this morning, Decisions Under Distress. Decisions under distress. We'll all come to a point in our life that we'll have to make some major decisions under highly stressful situations. And we have to be careful how we make these decisions under these highly stressful situations because they can be detrimental to us or they can be beneficial to us. According to the, the Walden University in Minnesota, Walden University studies of clinical mental health counseling. They said that people that have mental health challenges, if they're placed under highly stressful situations, they can make some terrible decisions. And I know mental health is a big issue in the world right now. People are dealing with mental health issues and we need to do all we can to help. But the study goes on to say not only people who are dealing with mental health, the study goes on to say people who struggle with controlling their emotions. When they're placed in some highly stressful situations, they can make some terrible decisions. 
because they're not willing to control their emotions, get so emotional, so stressful, so frustrated, so aggravated with the situations, and they make some bad decisions. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 17, a man of quick temper acts foolishly. Not controlling his temper. He or she doesn't control their temper, get caught up in their emotions because they're so frustrated by the world, they can make some foolish decisions. So it's not just everybody dealing with mental health that's going out here making some horrible decisions. Some people need to learn how to control their emotions. He says a man of evil devices is hated. We have to grow and learn not to hate the man. You hate the man, but hate the act. But people are doing some evil things out here. You cut on the TV, and I know some don't watch TV, some choose not to believe that it's happening out here, but you cut on and you see some things that'll break your heart, disturbing. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 19, a man of great wrath will pay the penalty. For if you deliver him, you will only have to do it again. He said, listen, if he has a great wrath, but he's not willing to control his temper, and he goes out and makes some bad decisions. Sometimes it's family members. Sometimes it's kids, our kids. Don't we wish that our kids would come to us if they get highly stressed out, if they find themselves in a highly stressful situation, that they would come to us before they make a bad decision? Oftentimes they come after they already made the bad decision and they want us to bail them out. And then he said, listen, if they're not willing to control that, you have to do it again and again until they make up in their mind, I need to change the way I'm making these decisions because they're making them under this control, this impulse self-control. And he said, you, you only have to do it again and again. God wants us to come to him before we make the bad decisions. In, he wants us to come in the time of distress, in the time of trouble, when we're confused, when we're frustrated, come to him. The Bible says in Psalm 107, Beginning at verse 19, Psalm 107, beginning at verse 19, he said, then they cried to the Lord in their trouble. We got to call while we're in the trouble, call to him. And he delivered them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and delivered them uh, from their distress. You know, God can send a word and change the situation. I can dwell on it. The Bible said they wept all night. It didn't say that they were praying all night. It said they wept all night and they woke up that morning grumbling and they came up with a bad decision to choose a leader that's going to tell them what they want to hear. They said, let us go back to Egypt. Let's choose a leader and go back. Okay, wait a minute. So that leader has to be on board with going back or you're not going to be the leader. Listen to what it says in verse 21. Let them thank God for his steadfast love. Let, listen, let them thank the Lord. When you call on him in times of stress and trouble and you call and he delivers you out, give him praise and thanks for his wonderful works, for his wondrous works to the children of man. When, when we look at this, and I want to look at this, this, this Numbers 14, but when we look at this, I want us to think about how, how are we going to handle stressful situations. We can look at this and learn from them and see how will we do things differently. Because Jesus said we're going to be faced with some challenging times. We're all going to be faced with some difficult, highly stressful situation. In Matthew chapter 24, Jesus talked, they asked him, Lord, tell us when will be the sign of the end of the days? And remember, Jesus said that there'll be wars and rumors of wars. He said there'll kingdoms will rise up against kingdoms. Nations will rise up against nations. He said there'll be famines in all the land. He said there'll be work, earthquakes in, in various places. But he said that's just the beginning. Listen to what he said in verse 8, Matthew chapter 24, beginning in verse 8. He said, all these are but the beginning of the birth pain. He said, all these wars that you're seeing, all, all these earthquakes, these famines, you think nations rising up against nations, he said, that's just going to be the beginning at the end of time. He said, then they will deliver you up to tribulations and put you to death, and you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. Listen, all, and all over the world are going to be rejecting Jesus. He said, all nations, you go all nations, you go over the world, and it's going to be, yeah, they have churches here, Church of Christ there, Church of Christ there, but at some point you go, they don't even want to hear about Jesus. You're going to get here right in this land here, they don't even want to hear about, he said, all over, you're going to be rejected for my name's sake. Verse 10, listen to verse 10. And then many will fall away and betray one another and hate one another. Listen, he said at the end times, it's going to be a fall, many will fall away. People want to know why the church is not growing. Why? Why the church is not growing like it did at the infancy of the church. Jesus said at the end time, you're not going to see this big flocking to the church. 
We want to see this flock each other. As a matter of fact, be ready for it. You're going to see a lot of people falling away. He said that's what's going to happen at the end of times. That there's going to be a major, like a great falling away. You would think that all you see in the world, that people will run into the church. Jesus says, not so. He said, verse number 11, and many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. He said, this is what's going to be happening at the end of the ages. And he says, because of lawlessness, which is sin, will be increased. Because of this increased sin, the love of many will grow cold. You know, I like to see them when I see the commercial and they're promoting love. Who I hope they never stop getting interested in promoting love. Because we see so many people promoting hate and pushing hate and and I want to get this person back. I'm going to get that person back. And you just promote and hey, I, I, I pray. And I don't know if they're in the body of Christ or not. But I love it when I see let's not stop promoting love. He said it's going to be time, come a time when the love is going to grow cold. You won't see it as much. You're going to see more hatred. You're more turning on one another. Verse 13. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. See, I got to continue to turn to God. No matter how high stress the situation, no, no matter the circumstance, how frustrated we may get, we have to continue to turn to God. We got to keep doing it. We have to endure all the way to the end. He said those are the ones that are going to be saved. Not lose control, not give in to our emotions and go do something and make some bad, terrible decisions. He said, and this gospel of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the whole world as a testimony to all the nations. And then the end will come. We're going to experience some stressful, high stressful times. And I pray that we be careful to make some the right decisions, that it doesn't look so ugly, that it doesn't look so bad. It, 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 it doesn't look so unachievable that we just say, you know what, that we just turn away from the Lord. That's what they did. I want to give some context before we go into Numbers chapter 14. The context is, was the children of Israel now were approaching the land of Canaan. God had promised them the land of Canaan, and he said now, he tells, the Lord tells Moses, send spies in there. But the spies was to go in there and bring back the good news that this is a good land, just like the Lord told them. He said, send spies out, see how good the trees are, see how good the fruit is, see how good, it, see where the strongholds are, see where the weak points are, the strategic, how they go in there. And so Moses, they sent 12 tribes into here to spy out the land of Canaan. Well, 10 comes back. They all say, yes, it's a good land, it's full of fruit, it's full of milk and land up flowing and good milk and honey. But ten of them said, the people there are too big and too strong for us. They said, we are not able to take over. God didn't send them there to ask them their opinion if they could take the land. He said, just go on there and, assess, and tell them if it's good or not. Tell them where the strongholds are, where the weak ones are. So ten come back and they give this, this discouraging report. J Joshua and Caleb say, no, we can take it. We have the Lord on our side. We can take this land. But 10 of them come back and say that they're too big. Not only are the Canaanites there, the Amorites, the Hittites, Amalekites, they're all there. They're not going to allow us to take possession of this land. And this discouragement became contagious to the whole congregation. That's why I try to keep discouraging people at bay from me. I do. You're discouraging all the time and all the time you would no doubt, with doubt and no faith, a lack of faith. You want to keep, it becomes contagious and it, it, this discouragement fell on them. It says they wept all night. It, 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 this discouragement was fear and frustration, distress and anger. Can you imagine weeping all night thinking that we're going to die? Listen, listen what they said. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1 and 2. Then all the congregation raised a loud cry. When they heard the negative report from the ten, they ignored what Caleb and Joshua said, but this discouragement was contagious, and they wept that night. And all the people of Israel grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The whole congregation had said to them, would that we had died in the land of Egypt. It would have been better for us to just die in Egypt. Or would that we had died in this wilderness. It would be better for us to die in the wilderness. Why come here and just get killed by the sword? I want to write this round, write this down. In highly stressful situations, increase your prayers to the Lord. You know, I have a routine. I, I pray, I do. I have, a, I, I have a routine. I pray in the morning. Uh, I pray when we get to the door. So sometimes you can tell we get to the door before we leave out the house. I pray a quick prayer, not a long prayer, just a quick prayer before we open the door and leave. Because this, this world out here, I pray for the drive. I pray for it on the job. I pray for the people I may interact with. And we just say a quick little prayer. It's just a routine. But in times of highly stressful situations, 
We should break routine. I, we should. The prayer should intensify. The prayer should increase. Jesus, when he began his ministry, he was going around healing and, and preaching and teaching. And as the, the grumbling started getting more about them wanting to kill Jesus, by the one ready to take him uh, and just uh, destroy Jesus, the Bible says his prayers increased. Listen to this. Luke chapter 6, verse 12. In context of hearing this, it was coming down. They were saying now conspiring more ways how they could destroy Jesus. Listen to what Luke says in Luke chapter 6, verse 12. He said, in these days, these days now when it's increasing, not his whole time, but in these days he went out to the mountain to pray. And all night he continued in prayer to God. It seemed like it increased, like his prayers increased. Isn't Jesus our example? I remember going to my sister's house last week and uh, visiting with my sister. We were sitting on the couch talking and I heard a voice in the back room. I'm like, who is that back? And my sister said that it was her oldest daughter, Serena. And Serena, her oldest daughter, and she was in there praying. She said, oh, she does that at night sometimes. She, she prays, she go through her some things. And, she, and it just touched my heart so much. I said, leave her alone. Don't mess, don't mess with her. Leave her alone. Do, the key is to pray. Jesus, our example, he prayed. Even before he went to the cross, before he was arrested, listen to what the Bible says in Luke chapter 22, verse 44. Luke 22, verse 44 says, and being in agony. See, he showed he came in human flesh to teach us something, to show us something. Don't look at just the weakness of his flesh. Look at what he did. He's our example. He said, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. The prayers intensified. We have our normal everyday prayers, our normal routine prayers. But when we, times of highly stressful situations and struggle, they should intensify. I appreciate the brothers coming up here praying and, and, and getting prayers and prayers before that. And I, and I hope, trust, and pray that we're patient with these brothers as they pray. Because sometimes people have things on their hearts. Sometimes I'm adding to the prayer. I'm praying while they're praying. Lord, if you, if you don't like what they're saying, you start a prayer in your mind and you start praying to God. But some people have prayers on their heart and sometimes they do and they should intensify. He says, and, and being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat was like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. This was serious times, serious situations. David was hot-tempered. David had to learn to control his temper. David had to learn, you know, you, you read David's life, he had times to hot He had to learn how to control his temper. Listen to what David said in Psalm 109, 1 through 4. Psalm 109, verse 1 through 4. He says, be not silent, O God of my praise for wicked and deceitful mouths are open against me speaking against me with lying tongues you know David did some things in his life but he said these they lying on some of these things that I'm being accused of I did not do then he says they circle me with words of hate they attack me without cause in return for my love they accuse me but I give myself to prayer David is learning. Now, listen, I'm not going to go back at them. Insults for insults. Go at, you know, he's standing in the right. He's saying they lying on me. He's standing right. I can go at them. But he says, I'm not going to give myself uh, to anger. I'm going to give myself to prayer. I hope we do that when we find times of highly stressful situations. We give ourselves to prayer. James said, James chapter 1, verse 19 and 20. Know this, my beloved brothers. Let everyone be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. It, it's not going to produce that frustration that they had that turned into anger. And then they said, let's turn and go away. It didn't produce what God would have. And it's not going to do it to us. If we let this world get us so frustrated, so angry, so annoyed with this world and the things going, that we end up making some bad decisions, bad choices. James said, James chapter 5 verse 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing praises. He said, if anyone among you is going through some things, let him pray. Prayer. And people say, well, they're tired of praying. I told them, I don't know what to tell them. We need to increase the prayers. So this, it caused, this, this, this discouragement caused them to be fearful, caused them to be frustrated, caused them to be in distress and be angry and make some bad decisions. But also calls them to question God. Listen to uh, Numbers 14, verse 3. Numbers 14, verse 3. Why is the Lord bringing us into this land to fall by the sword? 
This says that God is doing this. Our wives and our little ones will become prey. Would it not be better for us to go back to Egypt? He said, why is God? Listen, they're questioning God. And you know, it's commendable to think about the wives and the little ones. I thought about this one. I, I watch the news and I some know some don't. I watch the news and that people can't go to a parade without things being shot up and little ones dying. Don't we pray for the safety of our wives and our children? And our, we want our children to be able to go out in the world and just be safe. That's commendable to go somewhere. Lord, I'm praying for that too. I hope we're all praying for that. that we, people can go out and, have, and just be safe. But they call, so they question, God, why, why are you bringing us here to die like this? Like they don't understand that, that God is good no matter what we may see. I have to settle in my mind. Come to the point that we settle in mind that God is good. I like to say it every time where I go somewhere, we serve a good God. Not just here when I go to different places and speak. We serve a good God. We have to settle that in our minds. Write this down. We must never question the goodness, God's goodness. We must never question God's goodness. No matter what we see. Satan will try to get us to see some horrible things, some things that you can't even imagine, and it might make you question the goodness of God. We can't. That we know all things are going to work together for good. Listen to what the Bible says. Psalm 119, verse 67 and 68. Psalm 119, verse 67 and 68. He says, before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now I keep your word. He says, I learned something. Before I, I was out there doing my own thing, having my own way. But he says, then he came through some trouble, some trials, troubles, tribulation. Something happened. He went astray. But now he knows that God's way is the best way. Listen to verse 68. He says, you are good. And do good. Teach me your statutes. He's made up in his mind. God is good. Amen. You know, we have to share this with people. I have people on a job, and I know they turn on the news and they see things and they know that I'm a man of God. They come up to me. If God is so good, why this and why that? They have, trying to question the goodness of God. I said, no, God is good. We serve a good God. He's a God of all comfort. I said, I love it when they get on there and they've been through some horrible situations or some, and they say, listen, if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have made it through. You may be looking at the bad part of it. I'm looking at, look at their faith, their devotion, and their love for God, even though they experience something horrific. Even if it's death. I take them, if they come to me and they come on to talk about the goodness of God, I take them to Acts chapter 7, and I talk about Stephen. Stephen was being stoned to death. Stephen said, Lord, don't lay it to their charge. He said, Lord, forgive them. Don't, I, can you imagine that? You being stoned to death, and he's still glorifying God? His faith to God, his devotion to God, his love for God. I said it could be used to glorify. It's a horrible thing. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. But God is still good. Settled in our mind that God is good. Romans 8 and 28 says, And we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good. For those who are called according to his purpose. We know that God, this is what we say we know. It doesn't matter what's going on. They can show me anything on the news. We serve a good God. I know he's going to get some glory out of his purpose is going to be for even if those glorify God while they're in the midst of those trials and troubles. God never sent the spies out to ask them if they could take the land. Listen what the Bible says in Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 and 2. Numbers 13, verse 1 and 2. The Lord spoke to Moses saying, send me in to spy out the land of Canaan, which I am giving to the people of Israel. He didn't send them in there to spy it out to see if they could take it. He said, I'm giving this land to you. The purpose of them going in there wasn't to bring back a report to see if they could take it. They never should have said that. If you keep reading in, in, in chapter 14, you'll see what happened to them. But they never should have said that because he, that wasn't what he told them to do. Just go back and talk about, is it good land? Is it good trees? Is it good fruit? Tell what the strongholds are. Tell what the weak parts are. God grew angry with them. He said, from each tribe of the fa their fathers, they shall send a man and every one chief among them. G God grew angry with this lack of faith. Out of all he was doing for them, he grew angry with this lack of faith. Listen to what he said in Numbers chapter 14, verse 11 and 12. The Lord said to Moses, how long will this people despise me? And how long will they not believe in me? 
in spite of all the signs that I have done among them. He said, in, in, in spite of everything that I, you brought them out of Egypt, brought them through the Red Sea, sustained them in the wilderness for 40 years, and they still not believing in me? I hope that's none of us. We got to stay with them regardless of what happens, what's going on. Listen to what he says in verse 12. I will strike them with pestilence and disinherit them. I will make of you a nation greater and mightier than they. Some say, well, God is changing his mind. No, he's not changing his mind. God is going back on his word. No, he's not. He said he's going to disinherit them. But he says, Moses, Moses is an Israelite. And Moses was, was raised up in Pharaoh's house in Egypt. But Moses was an Israelite. He's telling Moses, I'm going to make the descendants of you. It's still going to be the children of Israel. But these right here that's complaining and grumbling, Moses had to pray for him. He had to end up, we talked this morning about praying for others. Moses said, please, Lord, pardon him, forgive him. He was going to cut him off. Disinherit means you were, you were in the will, but now he's taking you out of the will. And Moses prayed for him. And God forgave him. He pardoned him. Listen to what the Bible says in Numbers chapter 14, verse 19 and 20. Numbers 14, 19 and 20. Moses said, please pardon the iniquities of this people according to the greatness of your steadfast love. Just as you have given, forgiven these people from Egypt until now. You, you've been forgiving them. Remember they came out of Egypt, they, they the one made a golden calf. <laughs> Remember they made a golden calf and they was worshiping this golden calf? And Moses said, listen, you, you've been forgiving them. I'm asking you, please forgive them one more time. And some of us may have been worshiping things we shouldn't have been worshiping. Worship in places that we shouldn't have been worshiping. Don't dwell on it. God can forgive you. God can forgive. I don't try to dwell on the past. Just know that we serve a good God. See, God, I settle in my mind. God is good because he can forgive me for all of that. Verse 20 says, then the Lord said, I have pardoned according to your words. Oh, we pray for other people. I hope we know the prayers of other people be helping. Us. We can't pray anybody in heaven, but we can pray God, give them some more time. God, have some mercy on them. Have some mercy on our kids. Have some mercy on our loved ones. Give them some more time. Pray for them. The Bible says in Psalm 86, verse 5, For you, O Lord, are good and forgiving. We serve a good God because he's forgiving, man. When Paul said he, he thought about all the things that he did in life, and he said, by the grace of God, I am what I am, it's by his grace, abounding in steadfast love to all who call upon you. We, we serve a good God. We serve a good God. Finally, they said, Numbers chapter 14, verse 4. Numbers chapter 14, verse 4. Out of this frustration, out of this distress, out of this anger, they made a terrible decision. They decided. They, they didn't get a chance to carry it through. They didn't carry it through and go through. Amen. Somebody, thank God. Sometimes some, some bad decisions pop up in our minds, truth be told. We have some bad, out of frustration, out of anger, up with the situation, a bad decision may pop up in our mind, but thank God we didn't act on it. Thank God we didn't carry it out. Amen, somebody? Then somebody prayed for us, talked to us before they got a chance. But it was bad decision that they came up with. I don't see where they ever chose the leader and tried to go back, but this is what they said. They said, listen, verse number four. Then they said to one another, let us choose a leader and go back to Egypt. Now, they want to go back, so the leader they're going to choose. Now, the leader's going to be on board with going back because they're not going to choose. They want to go, they want to go back, so they're going to choose a leader who say, let's go back. Sometimes people want a leader that's going to tell them what they want to hear. Instead, a leader that from God is going to tell us what we need to hear. Write this down. We must never deviate from following Christ. They, they wanted to deviate from following God's plan. They wanted to deviate from following God's leader. No matter how bad it looks, no matter what we may experience in this life, no matter how frustrated we may get, stressful we may get, we got to increase our prayers to the Lord. We got to never question his goodness and we never deviate from following Christ. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 1, be imitators of me as I am of Christ. The only reason, Paul said, the only reason why you should be imitating me, following me, listening to me is because I'm following Christ. In other words, if Paul deviates from following Christ, we deviate from following Paul. Amen, somebody? Christ is the head of the church. Christ is the leader that, God, that guides us 
And, and we're going to make sure that we line our will and our world up with God with, through Jesus Christ, through the words of Christ. Amen, somebody? And he said, you deviate from following that. You know, I thank God that we have congregations that, that reach out to us here at the North Fort Bend Church of Christ. And, and, and I just recently, I just recently got an invite uh, uh, Katie Church of Christ, Brother John Baker. He wants me to teach, so I'm going to be teaching, Lord willing. It's going to be in July. I'll let you know the dates of what's going on. He said, you got 40 minutes, man, so I got, to, I got to do it in 40 minutes. Y'all pray for me. But, you know, I was just thinking just not too recently I spoke at Sugar Land Church of Christ. Fifth Ward Church of Christ calls me out. I spoke there. I spoke at Fulcher Church of Christ. Memorial calls us and see how we're doing. These are some prominent congregations in the Houston area. That, that's five of them right there. And I just want y'all to know that they reach out to us. Don't you know we're living in a time where churches don't even want to be affiliated with churches? We're living in a time that they don't even want to be associated with church. Thank God that we're not like that. We're a congregation that prominent Katy Church of Christ, Fifth Ward Church of Christ, Memorial Church of Christ, Fulcher Church of Christ, Sugar Land Church of Christ, the Jersey Village Church of Christ, that they want to be affiliated with us. Because they believe we're following Christ. They're following Christ. We're following Christ. Yeah. Out of the distress. Psalm 118, verse 5 through 9. Psalm 118, verse 5 through 9. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord. I hope when we find these stressful times, these situations, and they're overwhelming, can be overwhelming, that we don't turn from the Lord, we don't question God's goodness, we turn to the Lord. He said, out of my distress, I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me and set me free. The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do to me? He, he set him free from this feeling of fear. He may not have set him free from the situation. Jesus prayed in agony, but he still went to the cross on our behalf. He still went to the cross for you and I, but the angels came and strengthened him. Sometimes we pray in these stressful times and these situations, he can give us the strength to endure to the end. He may not bring you out of it, but pray while you in it. He can set you free from the fear and the frustration and the distress of the matter. He said, the Lord is on my side, verse 7, as my helper. I shall look and triumph over those who hate me. Verse 8, he said, it is better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in man. They were turning from the Lord and said, let's get us a leader to take us back. Turning from the Lord. He said, it's better to take refuge in the Lord than to trust in princes. Now, these are powerful men. You have some powerful men with great influence, great wealth. He said, it's still better to trust in the Lord. Don't leave the Lord. In closing, I thought about Matthew chapter 17. In Matthew chapter 17 is when there's transfiguration on the mountain of transfiguration, and then it's how it's described. But it's God showing that he wants us to focus on Jesus, fix our eyes on Jesus, to keep Jesus the center of our life. I just want to read this real quick. Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 through 8. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John, his brother, and led them up a high mountain by, him, by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as light. Can you imagine that, that Jesus, right? Imagine that, that this right before their eyes, Jesus' face becomes bright as the sun, his clothes become White, this transfigurate. Can you imagine? I don't know what we're going to look like in glory. I don't know what we're going to be transferred like or what this thing. Like. But can imagine that happening to them right there, going through that and experiencing the power of that and seeing that. It was, it was a beautiful thing, beautiful thing. Listen to what it says in verse, verse 3. And behold, there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with them. I don't know what would all said. The Bible doesn't say what all was said. And Peter said, verse 4, and Peter said to Jesus, Lord, is this good? It is good that we are here. If you wish, I will make three tents here, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah. He said, listen, let me build three tents here on this mountain so that we have one for you, one for Moses, one for Elijah. But God opened up his mouth and he spoke. God wants us to focus on Jesus. We don't diminish Moses, don't diminish Elijah. They had their place in history, the prophets of God. But he said, now I want you to focus 
Oh, gee, listen what happens in verse number five. He was still speaking when, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And the voice from the cloud said, this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. We got to stop listening to people. They grumbling, they complaining, and they saying, let's turn back. Let's go back. God is not good. Question the goodness of God. Questioning what well, well, the decision making going forward. We got to stop listening to all these people and listen to Jesus. Verse six, he says, when his disciples heard this, they fell on their faces and were terrified. But Jesus came and touched them and said, rise and have no fear. And when they lifted up their eyes, they saw no one but Jesus only. I wanted to do a sermon on Jesus only. If we could just move everybody out, get everybody out, and Jesus only. I'm going to follow Jesus only. I'm going to go by his word only. It doesn't matter how stressful the time, how much frustration that, that we just see that it, it looks bad. Some situations look bad, but we're going to make up our mind. God is good. We serve a good God. We're going to pray in stressful times, and we're going to stay. We're not deviating. They were wrong, so let's choose a leader and go back. No, we stand with the people of God, and we stand with God no matter how it may look. Decisions under distress. Let's be careful how we make decisions. I, Brother Vince has been in some stressful times and, and, and stressful situations, and sometimes Brother Vincent get the most. This lesson is for me. And, and, and most of the time make decisions out of those emotions. But now I'm learning. Slow down, Vincent. Take your time. Let, if you don't have to make it on the spot, let's go talk about it. Let's talk. Let's not make the decision on the spot. I know sometimes situations, decisions have to be made on the spot. I understand. But sometimes, listen, do we have to make this? Let's slow down. Let's calm down. Relax. Talk about it before we make this decision. Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. We got to hear what does Christ have to say about his salvation? So many people have their opinion on Christ. I believe he's a good man. I believe he was just a prophet. I believe he was a con man. People have all their opinion. But what does Christ have to say about his salvation? Then we have to believe it. John chapter 20, verse 30 and 31. Now, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. We have to believe. Some of us believe some of outlandish things and find it so hard to believe this, but these are written so that we can believe. Then we got to be willing to repent. Second Peter chapter three, verse number nine. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise of some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. God is not wishing that anybody should perish. And I hope we're not either. God, just come get them. God, just strike them down. God, take out this group. God, take out. I hope, what kind of spirit is that? I hope that's not our, God is not wishing that any should perish. You know what? We shouldn't be wishing that anybody perish. We should try to get to them and share this gospel with them before it's everlasting too late. Matthew chapter 10, verse 32 and 33. So everyone who acknowledges me before men, I will also acknowledge before my father who's in heaven. And whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my father who's in heaven. This is, we can't be silent about this. We have to share it. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, 19, and 20. Matthew chapter 28, 18, 19, and 20. And Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you, and behold, I'm with you always to the end of the age. Listen, Jesus says we have to teach all of it. We don't have the privilege, the luxury to just overlook or to cherry pick what we're going to teach. He said, these are the marching orders. These are the marching orders for the church to go baptize all nations and to teach them to observe all that I've commanded you. And on the day of Pentecost, uh, Peter taught this very same thing. In Acts chapter 2, verse 38, Acts 2 and 38, they heard the gospel of Jesus Christ, his death, burial, and resurrection. How Jesus got on the cross for our sins. How he was buried, how he rose again the third day by the glory of the Father. And they said, what do we do about this message? Listen what Peter's response, Acts chapter 2, 38. And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of your sin, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter said, every one of you, it should be nobody among you claiming that they believe in Jesus Christ and haven't been baptized into Jesus Christ. 
or don't feel the necess necessity to be baptized. Peter said, every one of you. In, in, in Samaria, when Philip preached in Samaria, Acts chapter 8, verse 12. Acts 8, verse 12. But when they believed Philip as he preached the good news about the kingdom of God in the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized both men and women. Acts chapter 18, verse 8. Acts 18, verse 8. Crispus, the ruler of the synagogue, believed in the Lord together with his entire household. And many of the Corinthians, hearing Paul, believed and were baptized. So we have Jesus saying, go baptize all nations. We have Peter saying, every one of you be baptized. We have Philip after he was preaching, men and women were baptized. We have Paul when he was in Corinth, people were hearing, believing, and were being baptized. Why would we teach it any other way? We want to make sure that we're following the leaders that God has set before us. Revelation chapter 2 and 10. Do not fear what you are about to suffer. Behold, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. And for 10 days you will have tribulation. But be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. This is about loyalty. We're going to go through some things in this life. He says some of you will be thrown into prison. So I may not experience what you experience. You may not experience what I experience. But the one thing he wants us all to do is to remain faithful unto death. Regardless of what we see on television, out in the world, regardless of what we may experience, we serve a good God. We're going to keep our prayers up. We're going to never question his goodness. And we're not going to deviate from following Jesus. Listen, if you hear... This sermon, you say, I want to be baptized for the remission of my sins. You reach out to us. We'll take your confession. We'll baptize you. You'll become a Christian, nothing more, nothing less. Grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you want prayer, reach out to us. We believe in the power of prayer. Prayer helps. Prayers helps to comfort us. You reach out to us. Let us know. If you hear and you want prayers, come down while together we stand and sing. There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Would you do so? For Jesus, your King, there's power in the blood, power in the blood. Would you live daily his praises to sing? There's wonderful power in the blood. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power. Working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. You can be seated. So blessed by everyone's presence here today. Great lesson, uh, Vincent, and thank you for that. <clears throat> um, we will sing this uh, closing song and have our closing prayer and then a few announcements. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you, take it then wherever you go. Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy Precious name, oh how sweet, hope of earth and joy of heaven. Pray with me, please. Father, for this time of worship, Father, we're so thankful. <clears throat> All the blessings you provide, Father, the time we can be here with our brothers and sisters in Christ and raise our voices to you, Father in praise and in worship. Father, we pray that our worship is found acceptable in your sight. Father, we pray that 
You could be with us as we enter this week, Father, that we take the Christian example that we should be to others, Father. We teach others and we can bring them to Christ. Father, be with us and guide us through the week and keep us safe. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Real quick, real quick, I just got a couple of announcements real quick. Um, first of all, did anybody see the 